Hello, welcome to another Becoming a Modern Man. We are playing our Black Green Evolutionary Leap Zombies deck uh, that we're testing out. Uh, might be a few tweaks and changes from the deck tech I did um, between matchups, but uh, I think generally this list is fairly similar. Um, and this time we are running up against a red green Tron deck. So uh, let's see if we can get underway. Uh, looks like we won the roll for game one. Okay, so this is our opener. Um, not the best. Um, obviously, one lander, but Bop kind of helps out in that regard. Double Brook K is nice. Got a bit of removal, Putrid Leech. Could be our turn two play potentially. Um, and then this Angler might come out eventually. So we don't have a lot of ways to uh, put stuff into the graveyard. Might be a later game play. I think is one of the flaws. I don't really like the angler in this deck uh, as it stands, but uh, it might be a way to go for the deck. Uh, Punt leads off with an expedition map. Very tempting to abrupt decay, which I think is what we're going to do. Drop the bop, and then just abrupt decay is the expedition map. So we're kind of on a slow start, really. Um, deck isn't super fast as it stands, which is kind of one of the problems with it. Uh, we're kind of not an aggro deck, and we're not really a combo deck, <laughs> so yeah, it's kind of a mid-rangey strategy, which doesn't, doesn't work out too great. Uh, upon the cracks of Comeric Star, Ancient Stirrings, uh, only found the tower, so glad he didn't find the mine there, otherwise he'd have Tron next turn, which certainly could pop uh, a few problems. Uh, we're actually lucky enough to have found enough fetches and things that we can actually just run out this angler here and the future leech. So uh, that works out pretty well, um, but it doesn't always work out that well with angler. Uh, these two guys, pretty good here, particularly against Tron. Um, future leech, I'm not in love with in the deck, um, or just in modern in general, I guess. Um, mainly because a lot of people run lightning bolt, and that means the ability doesn't come up that often because people will just bolt it in response so you have to keep it back but against the deck like uh, like Tron here uh, we're in a fairly good position just to keep using that ability every time so we can tap for 9 next turn if our opponent doesn't do anything too ridiculous um, which it doesn't look like he is, he's chromatic sphering into another ancient stirrings uh, and he's put a chromatic sphere into hand which isn't particularly exciting for him. So I'm going to get to attack for 9 here, which is sweet. Um, draw a troll that we don't particularly but I suppose we will because we can regenerate through any sort of pyroclasmic kind of effect and uh, we've got enough mana thanks to the bots etc to just uh, keep up regen mana as well. Just so he can, he drew, he's not able to draw another extra card or make coloured mana any, very easily, um, and that wraps up game one. So yeah, uh, that went pretty well. Front got off, we managed to stall our opponent, and then we got our two beaters down, which was sufficient to uh, win through on game one. See how things go in game two. I think we're going to be on the draw here. Okay, so this uh, in this current in this version, I was actually running Inquisition in the deck. Uh, Inquisition is good. Uh, I ended up putting it in the sideboard just because uh, um, you don't. I would kind of want to run as many creatures as possible, really, to make the evolutionary leap as good as possible. So uh, yeah, but it's good card to come in here against uh, against Tron, or at least a decent one. Um, Thoughts is probably better though. Um, so, cracking a fetch, overgrown tomb. So, if you can hear that noise, uh, apparently someone is playing some loud music <laughs> driving past my house. Uh, right, so we just lead off with a bop. I wasn't too excited about Inquisition against him at the moment. Um, So he's got the map, he's going to get Tron together, we're not really doing a whole lot. We can run out of this Blood Guest and then we can Inquisition. 
managed to skip past that unfortunately. Okay, so the good news is our opponent doesn't have anything ridiculous in his hand. He doesn't have Khan, he doesn't have like, Ugin or anything like that. Um, he's got a power plant, a forest, a chromatic star, and a, another power plant. Um, so I'm going to end up taking the ancient stirrings. Uh, the rest of his hand is fine. I just don't want him to find an Eldrazi or anything like that. So uh, that's the one that's going to be able to dig him deepest. He's still got a chromatic star. You can dig him a little bit deeper, but on the positive side, he hasn't got anything too crazy just yet. So obviously, our opponent searched for mine, end of turn. Crack star comes down. And nothing, which is very, very good for us. We're going to tap for two here. Yeah, and then we uh, use that Sackly Blood Guest in search of a new creature. We get a Groff, some Messenger, and then uh, obviously get to buy back the Blood Guest here with my plane of land. And we can run out the bop. Uh, that might not have been the best of actual plays, because um, really we just want to keep pressure on our opponent as much as possible. Um, but it's what the deck is designed to do, I guess. So um, I was just keen to. Uh, Keen to get that done. Someone taps 8 mana and uh, get onto the board. Um, so that's very, very. It exiles as well, so we've no advantage for our blood guest or anything. Um, we're basically dead here, but um, decide to keep running. Uh, try to see if we can uh, run through our opponent, but um, yeah, Ugin definitely is. Plus twos, Ugin hitting the messenger, and then drops a worm cry engine, which is very bad. Uh, we've got the gatekeeper, so we could make him sack it, but you still get the tokens, and then he's still got Ugin. So <laughs> yeah, uh, not really a whole lot we could have done there. So uh, that's the end of game two. Let's see if we have any more luck in game three. Maybe on the play at least. So uh, this hand is okay. It's uh, I mean it's good and aggressive at least. So uh, I think we're happy to keep this. Let's lead off with an Urborg. Play the Grave Crawler. So that's Expedition Map on turn one. Uh, we're lucky enough to get an abrupt decay. So I'm just going to blow up his map again. Trying to slow down as much as possible. And yeah, happy with that draw there. Front plays mine. In Star to crack sphere seems fine. So yeah, developing fairly nicely. Um, we're going to be able to uh, play two blood gases next turn. Uh, unfortunately, our opponent puts together a Tron and then drops a Worm Coil Engine on us, <laughs> which uh, is something we can really do anything about. Um, we don't have a lot of answers to Worm Coil Engine. Uh, sorry. Um, so yeah, uh, that pretty much wraps up the game, unfortunately. Um, worm Coil Engine, an early Worm Coil Engine, I think that was a 10-3 Worm Coil Engine for him, uh, was just too good to beat. Uh, too good for us to beat, unfortunately. Um, just not really a whole lot we can do about that as the deck's set up. Um, there's not really a whole lot of answers to Worm Coil Engine in black and green in general, really. But um, yeah, so uh, a little unfortunate there. This hand was fairly good and aggressive and uh, probably could have done quite well if it if, uh, he'd been a bit slower off the mark. But uh, yeah. Sometimes Tron drops turn 3 Worm Coil and uh, there's not a whole lot you can do about that.